Hello friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. And today I'm going to review the Riga Kite. It's a two-way stand mount speaker. Now you guys, you guys know Riga from their turntables first, right? They've been making turntables in the UK since 1973. And they also make a terrific line of electronics, even a line of CD players, really good CD players, and speakers. But their speakers up to this point have been very standard looking box speakers, very boxy boxes. Now along comes this one, the Kite. A clean break from what came before, no doubt, right? Because the cabinet is nothing like what came before. It is molded phenolic resin, AKA plastic. And the shape is, I think, rather beautiful, rather stylish, rather modern looking. It's a ported design, as you can see from the picture of the rear. It's got a nice set of binding posts. Front bavel hosts two drivers. There's a paper cone woofer that is designed and made by Riga in the factory. And so is the crossover, by the way. They don't outsource their crossover boards. They are made in-house. The Silk Dome Tweeter is designed by Riga, but outsourced to another UK firm. But they take great pride in that, that all, UK, all, all of Riga's products are made in the UK. If that's noteworthy because some other high profile British speaker companies to name two, uh, Kef and Bowers and Wilkins, they do not manufacture most of their speakers in the UK, but Riga does. All of their products are made in the UK. Now, I'm going to put up all the specifications, which are not terribly complete, I admit, but I'll put up the specifications. And also this view of the interior, this diagram that shows the ceramic bracing and plates that are used to minimize resonances within the cabinet, within that phenolic cabinet. It is an unusually light speaker, by the way. It weighs about a little over eight pounds. That's lighter than average for a speaker of this class. The price, yes, the price. The price is $795 a pair in the United States and 499 pounds per pair in the UK. And guess what? There will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day at the conclusion of this episode. Oh, I don't want to forget to mention that the Kite is sold with a lifetime warranty. Actually, I think all Riga products, as far as I know, are sold with a lifetime warranty. The only, the only available finish is black. There are no grills, optional or otherwise. It's just a naked speaker. Um, now, I noticed that when I played bass heavy music, that that rear port uh, put out a significant amount of air, which leads me to believe that you should not place this speaker right up against a wall, but I don't think you should put any good speaker right up against the wall unless it was designed for that purpose. But this one, I think you'd have to give it at least six inches, eight inches away from the wall, preferably more. I had them about 15 inches away from the wall. That's where they sounded best in this room that I'm standing in right now. Now I used three amplifiers over the course of the review. The Riga IO integrated amplifier that I reviewed here well, earlier this year. Terrific match, of course but also the Van Alstine SET 120 60 watt per channel solid state amplifier. That was phenomenal. And just to try something different, the Rysung A10 tube, uh, single ended tube amplifier using EL34 tubes. You know what? They all sounded different, but more different than, than usual. This speaker is very revealing of differences between amplifiers. Now round back, because the bottom of the speaker is angled like that, round back there is a plastic foot that you can screw in to hold the speaker straight up so the speakers are firing straight ahead. And I found that that plastic foot just seemed kind of flimsy for a speaker that's nearly $800 a pair. I mean, it's, it's functional, no doubt about it. But I was hoping for more, a more of a feel of quality from an $800 speaker. I figured out rather quickly that I didn't like using that foot. I actually preferred the sound of the speaker without the foot, and meaning that the front baffle was angled back a few degrees and the sound was firing up. 
my ears were a few inches higher than the tweeter height, maybe that was it. So this just means to me that anybody who buys this speaker, who calls themselves an audiophile, or doesn't even call themselves an audiophile, but anybody who buys this speaker should experiment with foot on, foot off. I felt that they sounded better without the foot attached, in other words, firing up. So Steve, what did they sound like? Well, they sounded good. They sounded fast. Very nimble sounding speakers. There's no veiling or sluggishness or fogging or anything. That, that speed is very, very addicting. The very first recording I want to tell you about that I played was uh, Wingless Angels. It's a reggae record, but it's an acoustic reggae. It actually feel, sounds like a field recording. It's like it's out there outside. It's produced by Keith Richards, and you can actually hear him singing a little bit and laughing in between the tracks, and you hear <laughs> it's recorded in Jamaica, and you can hear the birds and the bees in the background. It's a really cool recording. It's very uh, pure. Um, it's acoustic. It's acoustic guitar, a big bass drum, a flute, it's a lot of chanting. It's a spiritual sounding record. And the voices especially are spine-tinglingly vivid over the kites. Really, really exciting presentation. And speaking of exciting, the next recording I want to tell you about is this Flaming Lips. One, it's uh, the Flaming Lips do, so to speak, dark side of the moon. And they completely tear it up. I mean, <laughs> Pink Floyd, what Pink Floyd? They just make it their own. And it's, it's distorted, it's very, very edgy, it's, it's just this blizzard of sound and noise and spiky <laughs> things popping out of the speakers. I mean, it's all good if you're into that sort of thing. Now, this, if you're a traditionalist and you really love Dark Side of the Moon, maybe you shouldn't try this one. Maybe this one will put you over the edge or something. I don't want to be responsible for that. But if you're looking to shake things up with Dark Side of the Moon and make it a new thing, and bring it up to the 21st century, uh, this, this is definitely worth checking out. And the kites lit up with this music, which reminds me, the kites are one of these speakers that sound pretty good at very quiet, late night levels, but just above that, they really come into their own. They're nice, medium loud, and even played fairly loud for a small stand mount speaker. They, can, they play soft, medium, and loud above average, I would say, in their abilities. So my speakers, to do a speaker comparison, I pulled out the ELAC Unify Reference. Now, this is a contrast, a very large contrast, because with those recordings and others, the Unify Reference definitely had a warmer, fuller, I would say better balanced sound overall. Uh, the, especially the upper bass, lower mid-range was distinctly fuller over the Unify Reference. The Unify Reference's power delivery in the bass was, was superior to the kite. Um, their imaging was also a bit more focused than the kite. And in terms of their build quality, the, the Unify Reference feels very, very solid. It's a very heavy speaker for its size, and the kite weighs about eight pounds. So the difference in, in apparent well, solidity of the box definitely goes to the ELAC, definitely. But returning back to the kite, the kite just had more life to the sound. It was, it, was it like a Klipsch? I was just about to say that. Is it like a Klipsch RP600 in that way? Mm, kinda, but there's definitely the kite just as a more finessed, more refined sounding speaker than the RP600. Sticking with the kite, I switched, I switched amplifiers and went to the Van Alstein Set 120 solid state amp. And that amp was, was enough warmer that it really fleshed out the sound of the kite in, in ways that were certainly agreeable to me. I wanted a little bit of extra warmth in the mids, a little extra warmth in the, in the upper bass, and the SET 120 absolutely did that. It also seemed more powerful and could play louder with ease. Uh, it was more dynamic with the SET 120, absolutely. So remember, I, I started with the Riga IO integrated, then I went to the SET 120. The third amplifier that I tried was the Rysung A10, and that's an all-tube design, tube rectifier, 
EL34 output tubes, puts out six watts per channel because it's single-ended, which sounds like it might not be enough, but actually it sounded pretty good as long as I wasn't cranking it, but it was the warmest sound of the three amplifiers, and it definitely fleshed out the sound of the kite. Voices had more body, more chest to them. I liked it a lot, and it also seemed more three-dimensional. There was just a space angle to it that I really enjoyed. Regarding the imaging capability of the speaker, well, with the Riga amp and the Van Olsen amp, it was good. Uh, it was pretty specific sounding, had good center fill, um, but depth was eh, not so good. Not flatter sound, not as 3D as I was getting from the Rysung A10, the tube one. That one just kind of opened it up, just gave me more, <laughs> more 3D, more holographic presentation with the Rysung, which by the way is the least expensive amplifier of the three. It's about $450 with free shipping on Amazon last time I checked. So I don't want to give you the impression that I didn't think that the Riga amp and the Riga speakers together weren't really good. As a matter of fact, on this one, Vladimir Horowitz at home now, it's a solo piano recording, presumably in his living room. And he's an old man at this point, but he's still a master. You are in the presence of genius when you hear him play. Because it's his phrasing, his timing of the notes, the shading of them, the dynamics, the touch, it's all absolutely exquisite. And the Riga Riga combination was, was bringing that all back home for me. So yeah, that was truly spectacular. Okay, so now we're gonna do, so Steve, what do you really think? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I like this speaker a lot. It has personality. It is not a neutral sounding, accurate sound. It's not, because the mid-range is a bit lean, the upper bass is a little bit lean, but you can flesh it out with a tube amplifier, absolutely. Um, it's not the most dynamic speaker, it's not the most powerful speaker. But that, but that purity, that transparency, that liveliness, the way it handles rhythm and communicates timing, those are its strengths. But anyway, I like the kite, but it isn't, it isn't gonna make everybody happy, but then again, what speaker does? There, there really is no such thing. And now, well now I can say, <laughs> it is time for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Oh boy, this one comes from Steve. He's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The amp is a Macintosh MA8900. He purchased it 40 years to the day after buying a Mac 4100 in 1979. He sold stereos back then, and one of his buddies still works at the store. His power conditioner is a Furman Elite 15 DMI, the digital part of a system is covered by a Cocktail Audio X45. He records analog to 192 digital, just to make it easier. The turntable, though, is a Musical MMF 7.3 with a Goldring Erolka cartridge. The speakers, though, they are the star attraction, at least in my book. Those are Alltech Lansing Model 19s, I'm guessing, Steve's guessing, from the late 1970s. The drivers, though, are new. There's uh, Great Plains 802 8G2 high-frequency compression driver with also Great Plains crossovers. The woofers are rebuilt 415s. The cat, though, is <laughs> that little cat is stuffed with Sonex foam. The mouse never heard him coming. Steve, that is one hell of a system. Okay, we are back. And my name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. I said that earlier, right? Yeah, I think I did. Anyway, uh, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please give me a thumbs up. The algorithm, the YouTube algorithm, certainly uh, count. That counts for something with the algorithm. And I'm, and I'm working for the algorithm. And, oh, the other thing is, please subscribe to the channel. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. But if you have yet to subscribe, you can join us on the, the push towards 200,000 subscribers. We'll see how that goes, but I want you to be, I want you to be with us. Um, and speaking of being with us, I'd appreciate it if you check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t, 
R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac. And there was a link to that site directly below. And now I can say, <laughs> and now I really can say, my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.